is the status of the research and literature based on intensive behavioral interventions? The good news is that there is a research based on intensive behavioral interventions, uh, but not without its problems. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what that research base looks like. Uh, within the context of children uh, who are showing problem behaviors in schools, uh, from a uh, perspective of, of uh, effective, explicit-based interventions, the, the primary method for uh, starting intensive behavioral interventions uh, begins with a function-based assessment. And a function-based assessment is a series of steps or, or tools that a, a practitioner, uh, clinician, school psychologist may implement to try to identify the motivating reasons for a student's problem behavior. Uh, Function-based assessments can take many different forms, uh, but essentially they all include features of identifying uh, the conditions under which problem behavior is likely to occur. Uh, from the literature, we know that those reasons tend to fall into uh, two broad categories uh, for accessing positives, attention tangibles, uh, for escaping negatives, uh, avoiding schoolwork, avoiding uh, social interactions, and for a smaller percentage of kids, there may be some internal uh, motivating uh, biological reasons for engaging in problem behavior. But the intensive behavioral interventions begin with assessment. Uh, once that assessment has been conducted, then uh, a hypothesis or a motivation is, is uh, created about why that child is engaging in those behaviors. And the goal of this sort of FBA approach is to identify those motivations and use that information to develop interventions. And so many intensive behavioral interventions for students uh, look at teaching replacement behaviors. So for students who might be engaging in uh, problem behavior to escape a uh, difficult academic task, task the uh, replacement behavior might be requesting assistance. For students who might be uh, avoiding uh, uh, social situations, possibly giving them a safe zone in the classroom to, to sort of uh, you know, reassure themselves before they go into a, a situation. So the ideas are sort of taken and match the assessment to uh, the intervention. And for a good part of the population, we've done a, a, a nice job about that. Uh, where we are still lacking in terms of research and what we need to know more about is how we can apply that same technology to less obvious behaviors like depression, like anxiety, like uh, significant social withdrawal, and understanding that that if there are uh, environmental or observed motivations for those sorts of uh, internalizing type behaviors, can we take the same assessment procedures or something like them and apply them to uh, children with these types of intensive behavioral needs and create function-based assessments and function-based interventions for that population of students as well. Uh, we're not there yet. I think there's some good work uh, being done in that area, but we don't have the evidence base that we do for more externalizing outgoing behaviors. Um, a second sort of limiting area in terms of intensive behavioral supports uh, comes with those students who show uh, high intensity but low frequency behaviors like uh, physical attack or vandalism. Those things that don't occur daily, uh, whose motivations are not always clear because we just don't have enough examples of seeing why kids are doing that. Uh, so one way that the field is being pushed is looking at um, classes of behavior and seeing how students who engage in those intensive, low frequency but high intensity behaviors may be showing other signs that might be related to those sorts of episodes that we can take that information and then again build a function based intervention um, and understanding uh, what might work for those students. I think the last thing I can talk about sort of the current state of the research is that despite our, our advances in uh, intervention development for this population, we do uh, still come across the attitude problem that oftentimes students who engage in intensive problem behavior uh, are children that are rejected by schools, rejected by teachers, re rejected by their peers, and uh, for some reason the uh, notion is that, that these students are doing things on purpose and, and, and we're oftentimes shaped into looking only at the child and not the environment, which is uh, totally counterintuitive to how we've been talking about uh, interventions in general for these populations. So uh, while we're developing these interventions, educating folks about why students might be doing these things and understanding that um, uh, identifying motivations is the best way to sort of approach this problem, but taking the ownership 
and taking this ownership and saying, uh, like I tell my students, you know, if a child is engaged in, in this sort of problem, the first question should be asking, we should be asking is why are we doing, why is this child doing this, and am I doing something or is the environment doing something to contribute to this child's problem behavior. And I think that if we can sort of teach that attitude, teach that, that approach to problem behavior, then we'll continue to progress in our uh, development of effective interventions for students with these sorts of issues.